I'm feeling real sweet. Love the new stage. Thank you so much. So uh, let's just get into it today, man. You know, same old, same old roll call. We got some news today. NFL signs a new TV deal, long-term agreement with the media partners. Amazon gets Thursday night games now. So uh, big shout out to Amazon first digital package. Uh, Sunday, CBS, Fox, still get your afternoon games. NBC, you still get your Sunday night football. Uh, CBS joins the Super Bowl rotation. So, you know, I kind of like CBS production, so um, I'm anxious to see what they're going to do with the uh, Super Bowl. I like watching games on CBS more than Fox. I don't, the, the presentation's just better. They have uh, better announcers, too. I'm sure Romo's going to get the nod for the Super Bowl if uh, CBS gets it. And uh, PBC, that contract goes into effect in 2023, correct? Correct, 2023 to 2033, so another 10-year contract. I'm sure they wanted to get it out the way did they oh uh cbs just did the super bowl uh sorry my apologies you know we all make mistakes around here i do have a producer they they stay on me about making sure everything is right around here so uh yeah also in some uh news other than free agency uh patrick chung pro bowler patrick chung has retired from the patriots this year um, he said he's ready to move on and do something else besides football. And also a, a strange story that uh, struck me earlier today. Quarterback Marcus Mariota was asked to take a pay cut. They say, if you don't take a pay cut, we will cut you, trade you, or release you. So why am I taking a pay cut? Makes no sense. Now, uh, I do want to talk about, touch on this little Deshaun Watson situation it's uh, very fluid right now. We have up to, I believe now it is, as far as the last 20 minutes I checked, seven women have come out against him. Um, I don't really have the details on that. There haven't been any charges formally uh, charged against him. So uh, as I learn more about that, I'm definitely going to keep you updated on that. I do have my opinion on that. But I will reserve that until I have more information about the situation because it's very fluid and it's uh, not a game. It's very serious. So, so that's PBC. not something I just want to uh, gloss over. I want to know everything about it. So, PBC, that news is after he signed the contract with Chicago? This oh, no, no. New. This is uh, Deshaun Watson. Oh, I got I, I, Russell's with Chicago. No, oh. Russell is still at home. We're going to get to uh, that right now. Let's get all right. Let's jump into the free agency. Uh, you know, this is the first year that uh, the salary cap has gone down. So, like, a lot of guys you see are signing contracts or one-year deals, and that's simply to get paid this year in hopes that the cap will go back up next year and that everything will right itself. So you see all these one-year contracts, two-year contracts, a guy has an option for the next year, almost kind of like these NBA contracts going up. A guy signing for one year, seven million dollars, six million of it is guaranteed because that guaranteed money, that bonus money you sign for is not a cap hit. So um, a lot of teams are trying to maneuver around the cap by um, not signing the long term deals, giving you all the money up front so they can avoid the cap hit on the back because the salary cap went down. So when you see all these teams like why, why are guys signing long term deals this year? That's the reason why because the cap went down and teams can't really afford to put all that money in there. And, you know, that's why guys are restructuring. Like even a Patrick Mahomes who just signed a deal last year is restructuring to uh, provide cap room so they can sign guys, uh, offensive linemen like uh, Joe Tooney and Mike Remmers. So um, let's get into it. Big name free agents. Uh, I guess it's a big name. Everyone wants to talk about it. Andy Dalton to the Chicago Bears. He signs a one-year deal for $10 million. Like, I uh, I don't really get that. Um, he really wasn't good last year with, uh, who was he with? The Cowboys? Then again, they didn't tackle anybody. I just don't uh, see where you go out and get an Andy Dalton, though. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't so, really move. So that's where I was wrong. Dalton to Chicago, right? Dalton, yeah. So, and he'll be going up against Nick Foles for the starting job. Uh, you know, only thing about that is normally great players and breed great competition. 
when you have two subpar guys, what type of quarterback competition do you breed? So, I, anyways, moving on from that. Uh, J.J. Watt and A.J. Green to the Cardinals. I, I really don't know how I feel about that. They have some talent out there. A.J. Green should get a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks. You're playing uh, across from DeAndre Hopkins, so you won't see many double teams at all. Um, they lost Patrick Peterson, though, so like you add a pass rusher, but you lose a corner. I mean, that really hurts your secondary. I don't know how much I really like. We'll just have to see. I, I'm not into signing older guys, but we'll see. Uh, here's a really good signing that I know people haven't really been talking about. But John Johnson is the best rated cover corner cover safety in the league. And he goes to the Cleveland Browns. And I think that's a really, really good fit. They struggled in their secondary last year. He's the best cover safety. Uh, if the Browns want to get out that uh, AFC, they're going to have to go through teams like Baltimore, who uh, attacks the middle of the field really well with their tight ends. Kansas City, who attacks the middle of the field really well with their tight ends. And uh, so a dude like John Johnson is uh, definitely needed in a secondary, a strong safety to help take away those tight ends and those crossing rights uh, over the middle of the field. So that's a really, really good pick for the Browns. I like, you know, the Browns have been one of the worst organizations for so many years. But I really like what they're doing with their team and how they're building it, um, making some splash plays, and then going to get some solid players, too, to build around it. So I like what they got going on. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, after Kansas City had cut both of their starting tackles uh, this offseason, they went out and signed, I think, probably the best guard on the market in Joe Tooney. And they went out and got a veteran in uh, Mike Remmers as a tackle so um they're looking to solidify their line they pick 31st i'm sure they'll be looking to get some offense alignment in the draft this year i mean kansas city is kansas city they still have mahomes they still have reed they still have tyree kill they still have travis kelsey uh they have not forgot how to play football um so uh let's just backtrack a couple of the trades that was made matt stafford to the rams that's official this week now that the new league season has started officially. Uh, officially, Kurt, what's his name? Carson Wentz went to Indy. So uh, he had his, um, what is that, press conference yesterday. They talked a little bit about that. I know he's looking forward to that. Uh, Car that's a really good fit for Carson Wentz, though, playing in, um, playing in Indy. I mean, they've had, they got a, they have the best offensive line uh, in the NFL the last three seasons. Uh, and they're the only team, top 10 offense, defense, special team. Uh, really, they're just missing that piece at quarterback. If they can get that piece at quarterback, then they're going to be a really tough out uh, all the way around because they can run the ball, they can throw the ball, they play really good defense. Although, uh, you losing Justin Houston, although they haven't lost him, they haven't signed him back in free agency. Not having them is uh, will hurt them. I mean, they still have uh, Buckner, but losing that Justin Houston pass rush off the end will hurt them. Come to Buffalo. All right, so uh, I heard a, uh, I seen something today, and it just it just struck me as weird because everybody's really down on Carson Wentz and really up on Jalen Hurts. Um, I really don't know who's going to have more success. I, I would lean more towards Carson Wentz based on the facts and the evidence I just gave you, being that Indy has a great offensive line. They're top 10 in defense, top 10 in special teams, top 10 in offense. And I can't say the same about the Eagles. Uh, offensively, their best weapon is uh, Miles Sanders. They're, they're probably going to let Zach Ertz go. Um, their receivers... Stay hurt all year. You, you just, I mean, they're getting guys off the street, Travis Fogum. And um, as far as weapons go, Carson Wentz is just going to have so many more weapons loaded in Indy. It's just an almost foregone conclusion. Not to say Carson Wentz is better than Jalen Hurts as a quarterback or as a player, but there is much better talent and players around Carson Wentz in Indy than there is 
Jalen Hurts playing for the Eagles. In some uh, other news, Mitch Trubisky signs a one-year deal to be the backup in Buffalo. Uh, according to Brandon Bean, uh, the general manager of the Buffalo Bills, this is just a reset for Mitch Trubisky. He's just coming here, uh, learning how to just stay a pro, stay in shape, uh, play behind Josh Allen in the case. And, and you know, not to say he's as good as Josh Allen, but he can move. He is mobile. He is a big body. He has a strong arm. In the case that uh, a guy like Josh Allen, who is not uh, very protective of himself or his body, could easily be injured one, two, the whole season. So with that being said, having Mitch Trubisky as your backup is not the worst backup situation you can have in the NFL. So, like, that is a really good pickup for them. Uh, former number two overall pick, first rounder. So you know he has talent. He's a talented player. He just hasn't put it together completely yet. So, you know, Mr. Trubisky going to Buffalo as the backup for a one-year deal for a reset year. It's really good for him, and, he, and something might come of it, especially if a guy like Allen gets hurt and he gets a couple snaps and he gets some chances to win some games and make some plays, then, um, you know, that'll be excellent for him. Uh, moving on, here's another, guys, and, and you're going to see a lot of these, like I said earlier on, like everybody's signing these one-year deals with the salary cap dropping this year. Uh, teams just can't afford to give guys longevity, so uh, you'll see these deals one year with all the money up front, another one-year deal. Um, it's Will Fuller to the Dolphins, uh, which, which is just providing uh, – uh, Tua with another weapon. He's scheduled to miss the first game of the season. Uh, hang, uh, suspension hangover from last year. But uh, still a really good football player. Deep threat. Went healthy. He's a really good receiver. I put him in at least the top 25, 30 receivers in the league. Uh, he could be a number one on some teams. He's that good. So, you know, uh, Will Fuller. Just a... Just, uh, just a player, man. So we'll see how that pans out for the Dolphins. I'm not too much really sold on Tua. We'll see the strides he makes within the next year or two to see his progression, but I'm not completely sold on them. Um, the Patriots, I mean, we got to talk about them every time, all the time. Say so why? Because they're always a factor in free agency. Unlike some teams, like like some teams are just not factors in free agency. Like a, a, a successful team that that never signs free agents is like the Green Bay Packers. Like they they don't they don't even care. I think they sleep through free agency. Honestly, they do not care. But somehow they win the division every year. They stay consistently getting good players. They draft extremely well. They the Green Bay Packers care nothing about free agency. Completely the opposite of the New England Patriots. They always are players in free agency. They're always active in free agency. I mean, they've, they've already went on a tear signing two receivers in Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. Nelson Aguilar from the Eagles, Kendrick Bourne from San Francisco. They've already signed two tight ends. Henry Henry from the L.A. Chargers. John Lou Smith from the Tennessee Titans. Uh... They've also signed uh, linebacker Matthew Judon, which is a really, really good pick. And plus, you take him from Baltimore, too, which really helps you out. Jalen Mills. And then they went out and they re-signed Cam Newton. And they acquired Trent Brown and also picked up Nick Folk. So, I mean, this is just like listing, listing, listing players. But honestly, uh, the Patriots had the worst collectively talent of offense on uh, they had the worst collectively talent on offense all year like there were there was teams that had worse records than New England that had more talent on offense I, I would say they were like one of the bottoms when it comes to uh, how good their receivers were how good their running backs were uh, how good their tight ends were uh, how good their quarterback was they were like lower level in every single position they they just did not have the players on the outside to compete with other teams. So I could see them really, really making a huge splash in free agency like they always do. Ah, moving on from those bums. 
Because you know how much I love talking about them anyway. Keelan Cole to the Jets in a one-year deal. Like, and you're going to just, like I said, man, this is just the theme this year in the NFL. One-year deal, one-year deal, one-year deal, because nobody wants to overly commit to it. So just a little rundown of some players maybe that you know, maybe you don't know. Keenan Cole has signed with the Jets receiver, tight end Kyle Rudolph. Is now a New York Giant. I know for some of you fantasy guys, you are probably taking notes on this. Like, yeah, I need to know this for draft purposes. And just, you know, setting up your roster for this year. Hopefully some of y'all play in a uh, keeper league and y'all was able to keep some of y'all players. That would be real, real nice. I know I'm looking forward to playing in my keeper league. Shout out to my commissioner, T.I. How you doing, Mr. Todd Ingram, man? Looking forward to getting it in again this year. All right, so. Here's a here's a name, Theo Riddick, running back to the Raiders. Uh, I'm not really like a fan of John Gruden's and his West Coast coaching style, but if you're going to do that coaching style and you're going to run that West Coast offense, you need a uh, running back out the backfield that can catch the ball. Theo Riddick is that guy, one of the best pass catchers out of the backfield. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I like that pick. Brashard Perryman to the Lions. Now, um, sometimes this confuses me because you don't want to sign Kenny Galladay that back, but you go get Brashard Perryman, who's a burner, but has really never lived up. Former first round pick of the Ravens, missed a couple seasons with knee injuries, and um, I, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, then again, we're talking about the Lions here, so. They're, they they are the worst franchise in the NFL when it just comes to winning an overall organization. Um, you 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 drive you drafted Matt Stafford and you, he's never won a division. That's all I'm gonna say about that, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, Jared Cook to the Chargers. I guess that's a good pick. You just lost Hunter Henry. I mean, Jared Cook. I he still he still has some playing in him. David Moore signed back with the Panthers and Desmond King. So, here's a really, really good pick that I think uh, you always need, and that's a really good cover guy. And Shaquille Griffin signing with the Jaguars for three years, $40 million. I, That is a really, really, really good pick for them. Um, like, some guys you can just count on. He's a guy you can count on to bring it at practice, bring it in games. And uh, check this out. I say... Not the best for last, but my most hated for last. Let's talk about the Super Bowl champs and the Buccaneers and their offseason, man. And um, you know what they're doing? They're just going to bring the band back, man. Yeah, man. Just We're going to put the band back together. That's basically what they did. They said, we're not breaking up, man. We're not the Beatles. Let's just bring everybody back. So Brady's back. Shaquille Barrett is back. Chris Godwin got tagged. Gronk is back. Levante David is back. So they didn't brought the whole band. Let's put the band back together, and they playing, and they, you know, they didn't signed all those guys. So, uh, yeah, they're looking to make another run at it. Just, I just don't like TB12, man. Ugh, just get on my nerves, man. Just. That's just always, always just the rich get richer, man, sometimes. Oh, breaking news here. Juju Smith just happened. I didn't even have it in my notes. It just happened, just popped up. Juju Smith signs back with the Steelers. Took a little bit less money to sign back with his favorite, favorite team, man. So there you have it. Moving on. Uh, some of the best available free agents still out there right now are receiver Kenny Galladay, which I uh, previously mentioned before. Uh, 6'4", 200-pound receiver, really gets deep, can run all the routes, really good footwork, route runner. He should have a job pretty soon. Uh, Don uh oh. Justin Houston, we already brought up a little bit and talked about he's a free agent, one of the best pass rushers. Jadavion Clowney, I was going to speak on, but he always just takes forever to sign anyway. Like, I expect him probably to be, he's a really good available player, but I expect him to be one of the last people off the board. 
And a surprising signing is Kenyon Drake signing with the Raiders. Um, I don't. He's a he's a good player, but he's just moved around from already been on three teams. I really don't know what that's about, but he's going to go back up uh, Jacobs over there in Oakland and uh, maybe take the job because you know Kenyon. He's a really good running back, and he's also great hands out the backfield. So they're loaded over there with Riddick, Drake, Jacobs. Uh, so that ends our section for Free Agent Frenzy and Prolific Sports brought to you by the Score on Air Network, Money Mag, the Pretty Boys Chat. I am going to commercial because I need to pay some bills for my new set, my new studio. You know what I mean? These lights cost money in here. So I will be back in a minute, and we're going to talk about but, of course, what we all want to talk about, a little bit of March Madness, and I got some scores up, and uh, we're going to look us into some upsets already. So, Prolific Sports, brought to you by Scrolling Air, Money Mac, Pretty Boy Champ, back in a minute. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at Be On Air. Man, can you believe it? My bracket is already busted already. Welcome to Prolific Sports, brought to you by Scroll On Air Network, hosted by the one and only, you know who I am. Pretty boys chant. So, how is your bracket looking already? Mine is already looking suspect. Did anybody take Michigan State last night, man? I did. I, you did, producer? Yep. Listen, we were, you, we were you talking like, that like smack on Cronin. Got my producer right here in that. You know what I'm saying? Look. Yeah, buddy. So, and you know, this my, Mark Fages is the college basketball guy around here. So if you have college basketball questions, you go to Mark Fages. And talk. what you don't want to do is you don't want to go to Randall Smith Coltrane because he ain't going to give you nothing but a lot of cloudy judgment, okay? What you need to do if you want to get the real about college basketball, holler at Mark Fages. He will give you the real, <laughs> real deal. Now, I liked those 10 seeds, and I think I lost one of them just a second ago, didn't I? Yeah, we both lost that, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, when did Florida decide that they were going to actually start playing basketball? They've got an injury, too, going I on. I know. There. I know they do. What happened to Virginia Tech? You they know, were like uh, They were up there with Virginia and Florida State there in the top three in the ACC. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is the ACC that weak this year? Remember how I said don't res disrespect the ACC basketball because they are the premier bat. Are they just weak? They how many? They've got a bunch of teams in and six or and seven, how, right? And how did Georgia Tech came out of anywhere and won that thing? Uh, all right, let, let's 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 get into. Uh, so Drake got us started last night, and I, I picked against them. My wife, I, I apologize to my wife. I said, sorry, I couldn't take Drake. I was taking Wichita State. Wifey, you got him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so Drake pulls it out by one point last night, beats Wichita State. Then we go on to see the Michigan State meltdown. What happened out there? Well, I think they uh... – they sh they they finished what they had to do. They they got excited at the end, did well at the end, and I don't know about UCLA. Cronin finally won a game. Man, now isn't that his first NCAA win? <laughs> I think they I think he's made it to the second round before. That for one time, huh? I, I'm not. I don't know if he's ever been to a Sweet Sixteen. He's no John Wooden. Yeah, our our uh, we we uh, have a thing with the Xavier fans that. Uh, give UC a kind of a, a tough time over how many days it's been since they made a sweet 16. I wonder when that was. Man, so uh, I'm just going to mention these teams. Norfolk State, they won their play-in game. 
Okay, we acknowledge you. You guys will be gone tomorrow. Uh, Texas Southern, they're also a 16 seed. They won their playing game. We mentioned you. Don't worry, you'll be gone tomorrow. All four games were pretty close. Two of them were one point games. Right, right, right. And you got that Wichita Drake game, man, an old school Missouri Valley rivalry there, man. I don't know how many people were paying attention to that, but uh, those guys used to play a couple times a year. Well, we know you were. So, uh, I know the guru pick Colgate said they can win a couple games, but uh, Arkansas, let's go ahead and put that thing away, 85 to 68. And I think, oh, uh, yeah, 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 Drexel's coming back on Illinois. It, that ain't happening. It was, it's, now it's only a 30-point game. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're coming. They're on the move back, though. Yeah, I don't think anybody <laughs> took Drexel in that one. <laughs> I don't think – if you know anything, you're not taking Drexel. Utah State. Uh, halftime, 31-25 over Texas Tech. I thought that uh, somebody gave us an update and said Texas Tech was coming back and was ahead on that. Am I wrong? Yeah, uh, they, they did tie it up, but, uh, yeah. Where are we no. at in the, sec we so, in the second so half? So, we got some finals. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got, a, got my computer going. Sorry. Sorry about that, people. We got some finals in right now. Uh, Florida, 75-70 over Va Tech. Uh, what else we got here? Colgate just lost 85-68. Check this out. I got the O State game on live, baby. Watching it right here. Actually, you know, I got Oral Roberts winning this game. Nobody man. believes me. No, <laughs> nobody believes me, man. I don't know why you cats don't believe me, man. No. They are very athletic on the inside. And they got a baller, man, that can shoot the cover off the rock, man. Well, you gotta be, you gotta, it's you gotta gonna be take scary. like we've like we've said the last couple shows leading up to today, man. It takes more than one guy. That, no, six, I, this is basketball. It really doesn't take more than one guy. Six foot one, one sixty five pounds on that superstar. Hey, man, you ever seen Allen Iverson play? Yeah. It don't. It only. It only takes one guy, man. Yeah. Is he? Is this guy Allen Iverson? Uh, he's <laughs> six one, one sixty five. He could be. We'll see. Huh? Well, I mean, I. Don't, What's that score? Uh, it's just starting now. Max Abrams, 24. They showing him right now. They, they, they got the goods on him Ooh. right now. The game is live. We're, you know, that's probably why uh, Smith Coltrane, is you watching Prolific Sports right now, man? Is that why you didn't show up today, man? I, think I, I was going to have you on my squad, man. man. We had you on the show, man. Come on here. I think and you're tell talking. Everybody, I and think we you're talking. The, the, the game together, and you tell everybody. All the excuses you was gonna make for your squad today, man. What are you gonna say when Ohio State wins? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for ever doubting Ohio State. Please yeah, I think I think me. you do it more just to rib uh, Smith Cold. Yeah, man, you I know think. I just do it the rubbing <laughs> the wrong way, man. Sometimes you know, I, some, sometimes I get on here and I don't even believe what I say, man. I just talk bad about Ohio State because I know it just ruffles feathers around here, <laughs> man. So. Sometimes I look here. He go. He's getting started already. He's 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 come, he's typing it in straight to the basket. Two points. Boom. Six one layup. Oh man. The layup show already. Here we go. Here we go. So yeah, you know, uh, my closest friends they know how I really feel about O State man. Shout out Tyson Porter man, Area Fifty One man. What's going on? He know how I feel. He's a he he's a uh, what you would call a. Uh, a sensible fan, sort of like me and you. We're fans, but can actually watch the game and say, uh, we're probably not going to beat Alabama in this national championship game. Yeah, man. I mean, like, as big of an X fan as I was, I knew better than to, like, talk about that down the stretch, especially when they were losing those games. Come on, man. Did you see Kentucky play this year? Man. Yeah, we, 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 didn't, we never even got into Kentucky because it was just like. And what would Kentucky have done if. Had he, we had Kay Cunningham? He, yeah, if he had your favorite player. Man, listen, we'd be, we'd be a number one seed. That's what we would have did. <laughs> you go from not making the tournament to, to be a number, number one. To a number one seed. Ooh. This is basketball. It only takes one guy. Oh, man. <laughs> listen. I'm not buying that, you're man. Crazy. Oh, look at this dude, <laughs> Abram. Hey, look. Oh, my God. He's shooting 30 footers like Steph Curry. Oh, yeah. It's not fair. You got a computer with the – I'm missing the game, Oh, man. my bad, man. Let me get you some love. Let me get you some love over here, man. <laughs> but, yeah, this dude, Abram, already averaging 24 points a game. I picked Oral Roberts, man. This dude is shooting from Morse Madness sign out here, man. He is like, like, 
clipping it up. He's been to the basket two times. Who got some bunny over here, man? This is, this is the time. It's time to show out. Yeah, this is the time to show out, man. You know, everybody's watching. Your mom, your uncle, your cousin. You know what I mean? Smith Coltrane is watching. You know what I'm saying? Of course he's watching. <laughs> of course he's watching. Man, I'm having a good day today. I'm really, really happy that March Madness is back, man. Uh, I really missed it last year. I really missed the tournament. Over like I really miss 700 how it days. Every, over 700 days since we've had March Madness. And I really just love how it brings everybody together. It's, it's, it's one of those things where uh, no matter who you are, no matter how much you watch college basketball, no matter how much you love it, it's one of those things where you can give a bracket to your wife. Here, fill it out. Give yeah. it right, and, and, and everyone has a chance to win, man, and it's fun. Some people just pick it because of the mascots, and they take home the $500 prize, man. Miss Stacy. Anyway, so uh, moving on, man. Old State is back in the game. It is a final. Oh, I guess it's not a final yet, but Illinois is going to finish off Drexel, man. Sorry about that. And Texas Tech is back in it against Utah State. Let me just ask you something. Since we're sitting here watching this, who are your Cinderella teams, man? Do you have any Cinderella teams? Uh, I did like the 10 seeds. Uh, Virginia Tech is gone now. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I had Rutgers. I know that. Mm. I know that beyond Harper, you don't like that team. Yeah, yeah. You I'll know, tell you what, the U- for Harper, but I just feel like I Georgetown. He could have carried them more. I'll tell you what, man. We're talking about bringing everybody together, man. And uh, I'm going to plug my show real quick uh, on the mark with Mark Fages. Uh, we had an awesome bracket show the other day. This man that you're watching this program with is an excellent producer. He's not uh, when he's in this seat that I'm in. He, he's not uh, sweaty palms and scared and scared to death about making a mistake like, like I am. He, he knows it. And man. That show was so much fun. That was the most fun show that we've had. We brought Randall on. We had the guru on. And uh, I'll tell you what, we were going to find out who the real guru is. And what was wild was, obviously, you started watching some ball because you and the guru had the exact same Final Four, the exact same championship game, and the exact same winner, which I'm sure you're going to get to in a little bit. Yeah, and you know we're going to get to that. But, you know, you're right, man. The best thing about it was just like – bringing everybody together like we do football shows we do nba shows but that college bracket show where we just were all on there throwing everything out giving our opinion talking this talking that i guess been so long and to just be able to get on do that with some and i just and you know i just you i had to start watching ball about a month ago I started producing your show. I got on there. I was thrown in. You said you want to produce the show today. Uh, Smith's not here. I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to. <laughs> I winged the first show. And from there, I said, man, I got to go home and watch college basketball every night now. Yeah. And you, and also on the production show side, to give you credit, you've upped your game every week. And you've made my show look better. And you've made me look good. And I really sincerely appreciate that. Oh, man. You're welcome, man. It's my pleasure, man. We in this to win it, man. I, you know, we, we're on there. And I would like this show to be presentable, too. Because when we're talking about basketball and we're talking about topics, I want those things to roll. Because if you're comfortable... I'm comfortable. If you know, the host is comfortable, then everybody can be comfortable. You, you know, know what this I mean? Is, uh, this is like a holiday. I yeah. really feel like it's like a holiday, and I couldn't think of anything else to say that this is like basketball Hanukkah. Bas- <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Today is unity. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, this is, is, is Batman, and it is. it is. And we talked about uh, we talked about our Final Fours and our Cinderella's and our champions. So basically, man, we're just watching games today, and I would really like, if you're watching this, next week, matter of fact, <clears throat> not even next, next week when we get on here, make sure you tune in Wednesdays, 2 o'clock, on the mark, Mark Phages, produced by yours truly. We're going to have another basketball bracket segment show, another very entertaining, myself, Mark Phages, Smith Coltrane, Will Turpin, the guru himself. We all going to be on there. We all going to compare our brackets, the winners, the losers. I'm already losing right now. <laughs> Although Texas Tech then went up by eight points. I'm feeling pretty good about that. But Virginia Tech then let me down. 
Uh, that's the only one that really let me down. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun, but I realize, you know, there's mo no money in our bracket, which would make it even more you wild know, for us. It's just straight up between listen, the Listen, the losers class. buying lunch. So hopefully, uh, Adam Dale, I want Chick-fil-A. Okay, the grilled chicken sandwich. Hey, that new grilled chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A is just so delicious, man. I, I got to say, man, I'm, I'm actually going to get me one after this, man, when I leave here. Do, do you like the Pomeranian sauce? They have this uh, keep lime type sauce or something. Ooh, is that well, new? It, it was uh, some type of <laughs> lime type sauce. Uh, uh, love, what kind of sauce is that, baby? I know you're watching. Hit me up in the chat. Let me know what type of that sauce guy, that guy. I got to ask you. I know this is away from basketball. That guy on your shirt's got some lime green hair. Is is Heath your favorite Joker? Yeah, Heath is my favorite Joker. Uh, I'm a Jack man. He's uh, you know, the Joker's my role model. You know what I mean? I'll show you my picture. I got like about four Joker posters on the wall. Yeah, I, I have a nice one at the house too, like next to my Kobe. I, you know, I, I only <laughs> get pictures and of Heath people. Together at it's a uh, cilantro lime sauce for the chicken sandwich. It sounds that must be a new thing. It huh? is. It's absolutely divine. I'm going to get one today. <laughs> <laughs> So I will definitely be going to get one. O State uh, actually takes the lead. It's 13-12 over here, and they're shooting air balls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I'm man. just turning to look, man. Uh, you know, they just took the lead, and they turn around and shoot air ball. Like, I didn't make this up, man. Hey, this team is not bad, man. They're, they're not really – they're not bad. So, Still early. It, it always early. It's mm -hmm. always early until it's not. You know what I mean? But right. then again, that that's where I worry about O State when it gets late, because you know they got four closers. You know what I mean? Or, or so we've heard. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, they have four closers. You better watch it. We're in Columbus, my man. <laughs> You got I do live in you Columbus. Li you live here. Remember that, I, man. They <laughs> know what I, I there. I I have, you, I, I have. Friends that have actually played in the program at the Ohio State, they come, they sit in my basement, they throw paper wall balls at me every time I talk bad about Ohio State. But they love me and I love them. We are friends. They are actually been in the program. They played in some NCAA tournaments for the Ohio State. That's they cool. played in some bowl games for the Ohio State. They know, and you know what the truth is? They know I'm not a hater for real. They know I really am a sports analyst, and I really analyze the game. So when I'm talking something, unless I'm just really just trying to just ruffle your feathers, they know what I'm saying is true. We know you like to rustle those <laughs> feathers, baby. You know, and I'm going to tell you, this is how I learned how to watch film. I learned, I, I learned how to watch film uh, my 10th grade year in high school. I went to, uh, it was over the summer, I went to a Youngstown State uh, camp, Jim Trussell. And they always watch film with the eye in the sky. And so you don't, you just see over top vision. So you see all 22 players. So you see the whole play. You can see if this right tackle right here steps the wrong way or steps the right way. You can see it. It's like. Why? Not being an Ohio State guy, I just don't know. Why did Trestles run with Ohio State end? Uh, Urban came after him, right? Them gold pants. <laughs> the gold pants. The gold pants. <laughs> I don't know about the gold you pants. You don't know about you don't no. remember the players swapping the gold pants for the tattoos? <laughs> you don't remember that, man? It's, That's uh, why you don't remember I, that. I need to I need to do my Ohio State. Yeah, you gotta homework. do your research, that man. That sounds you know, outrageous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's outrageous, man. Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember that? Might have sent, sent him back to you Youngstown State after that, which you wouldn't mind. You'd probably be a huge fan of Hey, your, he got a, he just built a nice facility over in Youngstown State. He got a nice little uh he he it, it's pretty good over there. He got a nice little facility over the a million penguins. dollar facility. So yeah, but uh yeah, uh, Terrell Pryor in the gold pants, man. He, he had he took the rap for it, man, and you know they got him up out of here, man. <laughs> I, I don't know how long you want to stay on here. I have, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right, man. I can't believe you don't remember the gold pants scandal, oh, man. The gold Please, pants somebody scandal. comment about the gold pants scandal for me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> like, what happened to Jim Trussell? Like, hey, yeah. listen, you know what I mean? We went, from, we went from basketball to Chick-fil-A to the Joker hey, man, to listen, Ohio State this is, football. This is an all-sports show, even That's though right. it's not the all-sports 360. Well-rounded. It's well-rounded. You know, if it ain't prolific, sorry, I missed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Joker is prolific. The, the the chicken sandwich, the grilled chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, that bad boy is prolific, okay? <laughs> we should have, like, one of the commercials. We need to get a Chick-fil-A <laughs> commercial up here. So we, I mean, I mean, you're you're a good salesman, man. We we should make a pitch to Chick-fil-A hey, and listen, get them to uh, hey, hook, oh, uh, hook us up. Oh, stay wants to be hearing me sauce. talk about them. They didn't went on, like, a 12-point a, a run, man. It's 1913. Who's uh -oh. this? What's uh -oh. this? Uh-oh. You know what the problem is? What game are you talking about? Oral Roberts. And Ohio State's up? Yeah, oh, yeah. they're up six points now. You know what it is right now? I can tell right now this is going to be a long day for Oral Roberts. They, they got some some uh, terrible players on their team. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't do your homework. You, you're, dude, ladies and gentlemen, this superstar player that he's talking about is six foot one, 165 pounds. 165 pounds. When I was running track in high school, I was like 160 pounds, man. It was man. like a sophomore. <laughs> these cats can't shoot, man. Like some of these cats on this team can't shoot, man. Like I'm big? talking about real rim grazers, wide open. <laughs> oh man, bricklayers. Yeah, for build, sure. Building the house. Hey man, you know, this was a really good run today. Uh, I actually, I got some more, more things to go over real quick, man. Before we get out of here, I just would like to say. Thank you for tuning in to Prolific Sports. Thank you for supporting me. Without your support and your love, man, I would not be in my new digs, Rags the Riches studio. You know what I mean? That, the other one was cool. I ain't gonna lie, it was cool. It was, it was, it was straight. It was all right. It was all right. You know, but this is John Blaze right here. This is definitely Johnny Blaze in the studio right here. You know what? I'm gonna have me a guest next week because I want to show my studio off to somebody that I know. Oh, no, and thanks, my, and uh, thanks for putting up with me in the production studio over here about to wet my pants. Oh, man. You know, Mark <laughs> Fages, I absolutely enjoy hanging out with you every Friday, man. I look forward to it. Always I, not a as good much as I look forward to getting my hair cut, but I look forward to coming in the studio and hanging out with you, man, and enjoying it, man. So always, check out his Always new a digs. fun conversation. You know, you see his new digs back there. We got in a whole new setup. You, you see that he had the square little box before. Now we got new things going on. So we'll try to give you another look. We'll try to get us a camera next week facing Mark Fages so he can look right at you and talk to you how he normally talks to you. And we can get back to everything. You see me, I'm looking at him kind of through the glass today. A really good show, man. I enjoyed myself. We got some sports thing in. We had good conversation. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Prolific Sports Podcast brought to you by the Score on Air Network. Money Mac, the pretty boy champ, produced by Mark Fages every Friday evening, afternoon. I'm on Friday afternoons, right? Yeah, I'm on Friday afternoons, people. Tune in. Check me out. Love y'all, man. Enjoy March Madness. Enjoy it next week. Peace out. Fifteen minutes early, though. Well, we already got started there a little late too. Hey, Mark. Oh. I'm done. <laughs> Put on this wheel right here. Here. Yep. Hold the lever. Turn off that. Go out the hood.